G'day, welcome back to the channel. Just some stuff I spotted on the tube of views recently that you may be interested in looking at. Now, first of all, this Vivo smartphone with a built-in mini drone with camera. And I looked at this and I had to have a really good laugh. What is wrong with this picture? Now, this is a, a, a drone that fits into a smartphone. I think they've patented this. They've put it, filed a patent. So you'll be able to buy the smartphone and push a button. Out will come the drone, fly around, get selfies, do all the usual droney stuff. And this tiny little drone. But there's only one problem with this drone. Can you see it? Well, look at the propellers. Now, with drones, we're used to having propellers that turn in different directions. So we can control the yaw. All these propellers are turning in the same direction. So this drone would not fly. It would not be stable. It would not be controllable. Oh, dear. How sad is that? It shows you um, it's a great idea, but is it really going to happen? I don't think it is. Certainly not in that form. So once again, it looks like it's a little bit of uh, fantasy over fact. And we get a lot of that. We get a lot of that in the whole technology industry. Companies are often pushing things, or saying things that are not true. Uh, we'll, we'll call it marketing spin it's very very common and unfortunately you've got to be able to read between the lines and the drone industry is no different i'll show you, I'll show you something else that i i spotted the other day and here it is it's the parrot and naffy ai little eye see little eye that i think that means intelligence um let's have a look the launch video of this fantastic new craft and here it is inspired by evolution now let me just tell you for a moment what they've done here is they've invented or they haven't invented a term but they've hijacked a term called biomimicry and what they're saying is we have learned from nature and to be fair in a lot of cases we can learn a lot from nature evolution is a fantastic design tool it finally tunes creatures to their environment and so they've said well let's have a look at what nature's done and let's mimic it let's let's Copy nature, because nature's probably got it right. Unfortunately, in this case, I don't think they did get it right. Well, there are better ways. Let's have a look. So they're inspired by evolution. Now, one thing to note is they're talking about creatures with two eyes. See, there's two eyes here looking out here. Really not such a good example with the dragonfly, because the dragonfly's eyes have quite a lot of peripheral vision. And you'll see later on why that is important. But there we go. And, oh, look, it can fly around wind turbines and satellite dishes. And let's have a look here. This is a very distinctive looking drone you notice it doesn't look like a mavic doesn't look like a phantom doesn't look like an inspire it looks like a parrot and affy ai and there's a reason why they've done this i think what's happened is the the marketing people at parrot have said we need something totally distinctive totally different that will not be confused with our competitors drones this is a competitive marketplace we need to show the market that we are different and we need a point of distinction because let's face it the drone market's pretty saturated now drones have been around for quite a while and there are a lot of companies in the market and a lot of them have produced a lot of different models and you reach a point when a market matures where sales are not so flash anymore um, everyone who needs a drone or wants a drone has a drone so how do you keep the sales receipts rolling in how do you how do you keep making money when everyone's already got a drone well you come up with ideas that you say are earth shattering ground you know ground shaking fantastic everyone must have this because of this fantastic feature or these fantastic features or these things and that's what parrot has done here they've said let's make our drones so different that people will have to have it so that they have what they need and so they've gone the biomimicry way and they've made the the, the design the look of the things so fantastically different that they can go out and say look you know this is obviously not just not like a dji it's not like anything else you need this because reasons so let's take a look and here we go a little clue here who's this drone designed for well it's actually a professional drone so you are not going to buy this drone to take pictures of the kids from above at the swimming pool in the backyard or at the beach or on your holiday get some nice videos or snaps no 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 there's clues here a real professional drone and that probably means it'll have a really professional price tag i have not seen any prices for this machine yet but you can bet that this will not be your 9.99 best buy special deal it's no it's not going to happen this is uh, a professional drone and it is designed built for work it's built for work not for play not for pleasure not for fun it's built for work and that commands a premium in the marketplace it's not a toy it is a serious piece of industrial commercial equipment so but i want to talk a bit about that biomimicry again because this is i'm a little bit you know look at this here's the main camera it's on this little plasticky thingy bitty here and um it's it's gimbaled so it goes left right up down and then this also gimbals so it's three axis gimbal for this camera that's fine it is a 48 megapixel camera 
which and it's a half inch sensor i think so it means that the pixels are really really tiny so it's, it's not going to work well in low light but that's neither here nor there the thing i want you to look at in this image are these these oops these things here these are the sensor cameras for collision avoidance now all drones especially those involved in inspection work and, and commercial industrial need collision avoidance these days obstacle avoidance so what these cameras look at the frontier for things you might bang into and this is why they've got the biomimicry they're saying in nature creatures just have two eyes and they look out the front and if they want to look around they turn their head if they want to look behind they turn their head if they want to look down they turn their head so they've said we're going to copy nature we're going to use this two eyes only and move them around to see where we're going and I have to say, I think this is a bad idea. Now, as I said, evolution is a fantastic design tool. It, it adapts um, things to their environment really effectively, although it takes a very long time. But it's not the perfect tool, because if you look at, let's take another look at aviation. Um, birds have wings, airplanes have wings. But birds flap their wings, airplanes have propellers. Why do airplanes have propellers? Well, because you can't build a propeller evolution can't create a propeller it's it's just biologically not possible to create a propeller we we there are mechanisms involved in propellers that can't be used in biology you can't have blood flow to a propeller um so things like that so what has happened is mankind has looked at birds and we've improved on them we have improved over evolution we have made propellers which are very efficient in fact in the white paper for this drone they talk about how efficient these propellers are with a figure of merit of 66 percent or something oh, i don't know what it is but these propellers are fantastically efficient well if they're copying nature why doesn't this thing flap its arms no because nature isn't always best but what has happened here i'm pretty sure is that the the people in the design and styling department have said whoa we need to have this looks so cool these little things they move up and down you watch these things move up and down in a moment you'll see look up down see oh so you can see you can avoid obstacles when you're climbing you can avoid obstacles when you're descending but there's a really big problem here well there's several really big problems the first thing is you can only look in one direction at once. If you've ever been blindsided, and remember, sucker punches, that's what happens when people sneak up behind you and punch you when you're not looking. Um, well, if you've only got two eyes, they can only look in one direction at a time. So while these eyes are looking down, you cannot avoid obstacles above you. And while the eyes are looking up, you can't avoid obstacles below you. And these things will swivel right down and look behind you. But if you're doing that, you can't avoid obstacles in front of you. Now, that's kind of interesting. And also, they can't look out the side. There's no peripheral. These have got a, a reasonably wide angle of or field of view, but there's still blind spots. This drone has blind spots. And that, seriously, what Skydio have done, for example, is much better. They've just said, well, these cameras, are, the cameras on these, on these little pods here, let's go back, these little cameras here, if you look at the white paper, these are simply HD. That's about 1280 by 800 or 900 pixels. They're not, they're not full HD. They're just HD cameras monochrome so just black and white not even color and they have a global shutter so they're probably a ccd camera and you've been able to buy cameras with those specs from hobby king for 30 bucks for years right so these are not necessarily very expensive cameras so why not do what skydio did skydio just littered their drone with cameras it's got cameras looking out the back cameras looking out the side cameras looking out the top the bottom everywhere you could possibly encounter an obstruction or an obstacle it is a camera looking so it looks in all directions at once fantastic it's not going to get sucker punched this drone is vulnerable to sucker punching um because it can only look in one direction at once so they've just taken this skydio have got a really good idea maybe they've patented it so they couldn't use it on here i don't know but they've said well we're going to be different we're going to have these wiggly movie uppy downy things and of course this is another problem this is a professional drone designed for work built for work but a lot of places you want to use a professional drone such as a building construction site or whatever you're going to have dust and dirt and grime flying around. And where you've got fine clearances, like where these things rotate up and down, if a bit of dust or dirt gets in there, it could jam it. And even if it doesn't jam it, it will produce premature wear. And I mean, we've got other bits here. These things are going to wear. And if you have a little bit of a handling accident or, or drop the drone or you hit something, then these can go out of calibration. And therefore, your, your obstacle avoidance is compromised. So you have to recalibrate. And in a business environment, every minute that you have to spend recalibrating something or cleaning something, or adjusting something is money down the drain you can't charge for those minutes that's money lost so it may be built for work but it's not designed particularly well for work in my honest opinion with this really sort of uh, style over function anti uh, collision avoidance thing i think that's really bad but let's move on to what else this drone does yeah see the swivelies that's going to wear out it's got a 48 megapixel camera does hdr 10 look it can photograph it can video lava isn't that fantastic now 
I know DJI drones do that. In fact, a lot of the lava footage recently has come from DJI drones. Nothing flash there, nothing fantastic. And I would also say that um, with a 48 megapixel camera, um, you're looking at eight micrometer pixels. It's not going to have particularly good low light performance. So that could, in theory, limit the amount of time you can spend doing a job because if the light gets too low, the camera gets noisy, you cannot make out the detail from the noise. It may be a factor. And it goes in the white paper and talks about the fantastic benefits of this 48 megapixel camera versus a 20 megapixel camera from the competitors. But sometimes bigger sensors with fewer pixels give better results, especially in low light. So there's something to consider. Anyway, fly with 4G. Now, this is one of the real selling points of this drone. It will fly beyond the range of its built-in 2.4, 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi system using the 4G cellular network. That's brilliant. It's fantastic. I mean, that is a real selling feature. Um, although they make some rather specious claims about it. So fly with 4G. There you go. Fly. You can fly around there. And in urban setups. Now, one of the things in urban setups like this, where you've got tall buildings, is not even the limitation of your radio link, but GPS issues. You get you get multi-pathing off buildings, reflections of the GPS signals. You can lose a GPS lock very easily in an environment like this. So they don't seem to have done anything to mitigate that. You've just got 4G connectivity. So you, I don't know. And here we go. This is one of the claims, I think, which is unreasonable. Range without limits. Yes, there are limits. Of course there are limits. The limit, first limit is how long does the damn thing fly? Well, they say it flies for 32 minutes. And this is interesting. Not up to 32 minutes. They say it flies for 32 minutes. Now, everybody else in the drone market, DJI and all the others, they say up to so many minutes of flight time. Because they know that there are many, many factors that will affect the duration of a flight, the temperature, the altitude you're flying at, whether there's any wind you have to fight, all those things can change the flight time quite significantly. But parrots say in their white paper, 32 minutes. No ifs, buts or maybes, 32 minutes. So if you buy one of these and it does 30 minutes, take it back, get your money back. It's obviously faulty. <laughs> but anyway, range without limits. So you can only fly as far as your battery will last. And they claim a range of 22.4, or a maximum flight distance of 22.5 kilometers. So your range is really limited to 11 kilometers, isn't it? Because you can't fly further than that away from the launch point. So what's the point in having a range that in theory is hundreds or thousands of kilometers if your drone will only travel 11K before you have to turn around and come back because otherwise it will not make the distance. Range without limits, not true, not true. Um, freedom from interference, well, in some respects, that's probably, it, it is not free from interference, but it's more resistant to interference because you've got the choice of two control links. You've got your Wi-Fi, which they say in the, uh, the FCC version is good out to at 10 kilometers, which is really the limits of the range of the drone anyway. But if you're flying in an environment with a lot of Wi-Fi interference on that band, you can switch to 4G or it will switch to 4G, which will give you backup. So it is not free from interference, but it is resistant to more resistant to interference. And marketing again, marketing people they're just wanks. They just they tell lies. Um, they they well, should I say they they embellish the truth with extensions? That's what I would say. So yeah, okay. And it doesn't give you confidence when you see that. Um, quite often, a really good feature is overhyped to the point where you've got to say why. I mean, the feature is fantastic. Um, it, why do you need to overstate the benefits? And that, that reduces my confidence in a product. But here we go, designed for photogrammetry. What is photogrammetry? If you're not familiar with it, it is where you take a whole series of two-dimensional images from different angles, and then you throw it into a computer, and it creates a three-dimensional model. Like this, see that three-dimensional model there? That's been created by these images here, where it's sweeping around, getting different views. You throw that into a piece of software, and it comes up with a 3D model. I've done it here with this, this transmission tower. So there you go. There's another example. Not very good quality, is it? It's pretty crap. But um, yeah. And then you can, it's got one click. So obviously it does the flight and then you upload the software to the program that does all the work. And there you go. Now, secure embedded element, or embedded secure element. This is kind of taking a poke at DJI because they're saying all your stuff that we collect through our drone is encrypted and it's only ever sent away from the drone in an encrypted form. So you can upload it directly to the cloud if you've got a cloud storage as the drone's flying, this stuff can be encrypted and uploaded to the cloud. Now, that may be really, really useful in some situations. Remember, in America, there's a whole lot of kerfuffle going on about our DJI drones secure. Are we going to be sending our stuff to China? And, and DJI has done a lot of work to try and convince the US government and other sensitive operators that their, their data is safe. Um, Parrot have come right off the bat and said, right, you know, this is why we are safe. Choose us instead. You know, no, no uncertainty. We've got this secure embedded element. Um, we are the men for the job. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, but if it's an issue, then that's important. Now, here we go. This is another thing. Autonomous flight. My goodness, how long has Arduipilot, Arducopter had autonomous flight? 
<laughs> it's nothing new. It's nothing new at all. And here we're seeing something that um, Skydio sort of really made noise with, and that is the ability to sense objects and to fly around them. Now, this is a simple um, stereoscopic system. The room, we've only got two cameras on this drone, so they've made it very simple. Not as effective, perhaps, as Skydio, but it's just simple. And it can judge the distance of an object and therefore, in theory, avoid it or at least stop, avoid yourself crashing into it. And this is just a graphical representation of that, fairly straightforward. Um, but now we get some other good stuff. It has an onboard drone SDK. Now, what that means is you can write code that interfaces with the onboard systems of the drone. You can write them in Python, I think, and maybe some other languages. It's a shame they don't have Fortran and COBOL, but hey, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so you can actually interact with the drone and do things. It's got object following, object point of interest, object tracking, which is kind of cool stuff, really useful in some cases. So you've got the onboard drone SDK and even on the ground station, the ground station is open source, which is fantastic. That means you can modify it, you can tweak it, you can do whatever you need to make it do the job that you want it to do if it doesn't do it out of the box. An interesting aspect of that is I think, again, we're looking at professional and work environments. What Parrot are going to be doing is selling this drone to companies that will customize it, that will create new ground station applications, new flight applications, and then resell it to specific vertical markets. So as I said, it's not the drone for your holiday selfies and you know snaps and lovely stuff like that, or for racing. It is a drone design for business design for work and this will give it a really key selling point this sdk and this open source ground station really are strong points i think they should have put those in earlier because those are the things that people inevitably end up buying it for photorealistic 3d simulator Meh. do we care i don't think so this this fluff that's fluff i really don't think so because in their white paper they say the drone requires no training you can fly it without training so why would you need a simulator it's it, seriously um it kind of defeats the claims that it needs no training but there we go and again look at how how distinctive this is no one's going to mistake that for an inspire a phantom 4 or mavic or whatever and again they, they show these little sensory things look look we're we're jam jam no I'm afraid that this is, yeah, this, I just, I hate it when the marketing people get involved and they take what is a good product and they overhype it to the point where you think, no, oh, this sounds too good to be true. I'm, I don't believe it. As soon as you have some doubt and some of the claims made, you, every claim comes into doubt. Is it really? And no one has seen one of these, or no one I know has seen one of these drones in the wild yet. So maybe they do what they say, maybe they don't. If they had just presented the facts in a straightforward way, without all the embellishment and the, and the hype claims like, you know, in, in free from interference, all that sort of stuff, I would have been far more likely to believe all the other claims. So at the moment, uh, I don't know that I would buy on the basis of this video, especially when I see how they have compromised functionality for style with the, the you know, the obstacle avoidance sensors spinning around and trying to make it look different for no reason other than that they didn't want to be confused with the competition. And to show you how old school they are, look, Aristotle had some involvement in this. He probably designed it. There we go. Anafi AI. And again, it's not even a drone. They want to be so distinctive that they don't call it a drone. It is the 4G robotic UAV. In most parts of the world, that's unmanned aerial vehicle. In America, it's uncrewed aerial vehicles because we can't be gender specific, remember? Oh, no, we can't. So there we go. That's it from Parrot. Those were the two things I noticed that were worth making a noise about this week on YouTube. And I don't know what you think. Go to the comments and tell me. I'd love to hear your opinions on these things. Um, and really, this is just a demonstration of when marketing people get involved and extend the truth beyond reasonable grounds. And when when styling people get involved and they make something worse just so that it looks styly. Seriously, Apple have got the styling thing wrapped up. I think they tried to make this Parrot drone look like an Apple drone. You know, if Apple was going to make a drone, it would look like, where are we? It look, would look like this, wouldn't it? If that, that would be the Apple drone. But Parrot, you're not Apple. You know, people don't buy these things because they look good. They buy them because of what they do. So don't sell them on all this crap about biomimicry and interference free and all that stuff. Stuff we know isn't true. Um, just sell it on its features. It'll stand alone. If everything you say is true about the functionality, it looks like a fine craft. It's not groundbreaking. 4G maybe. That's the first thing I've seen in there that no other drone has. But it's not groundbreaking. But it could be a solid base for commercial industrial use. Don't try and turn it into an iPad, iPods or whatever, or a, or a styly MacBook Pro. No, no, just make it work the best it can. Get rid of this crap, put some more cameras on it, and it'll be even better. There you go. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You make it possible for me to make these videos. 
and now get on with some real work. Bye for now.